Hey guys, Dr. Berg here. In this video, we're going to talk about the two most ignored minerals in diabetes. Okay, so this is really cool information. This is very powerful. If you are a diabetic, or if you're a pre-diabetic and you have insulin resistance, and what I mean by that is, if you have belly fat, if you have a fatty liver, if you're tired after eating, if you can't go between meals without being very hungry, if you feel better when you eat if you have swell, a swollen belly, if you actually have sweet cravings or high blood pressure, those are all signs of insulin resistance. If you have that, you, this video is for you. There are two minerals. One is potassium and one is magnesium. Now, magnesium makes an enzymes to help lower the blood sugar. Uh, potassium is involved with helping the storage of sugar called glycogen. So your body will store sugar in between meals in your liver and your muscles. So if you don't have that capacity, it could be because you don't have enough potassium. But here's the thing that's, that people don't realize. Insulin triggers the absorption uptake of both potassium and magnesium in the cell. Without insulin, you cannot absorb magnesium or potassium, okay? So right there, that's gonna create a deficiency. And then both of these actions, the lowering the blood sugars and the storage of glycogen aren't gonna happen. So you have a double-edged sword. So what happens is when you increase magnesium and potassium, or just normal it, if you just have the normal amount, um, you can decrease the need for insulin. You can actually help heal the sensitivity to glucose and the insulin resistance. And I'm gonna put some links down below that there's studies that show that you can take these two minerals and greatly improve, if not fix, insulin resistance. Of course, you have to change your diet and things like that, but that's very, very amazing that these two minerals can actually lower the need for insulin. And then when you lower the need for insulin, now you have enough insulin to pull in these minerals into the cell and it just will all work out real nicely, okay? Now the other thing is that hypercalcemia, that's too much calcium, if you look that up and I put a link down below, um, that can cause diabetes. That's one of the interesting side effects from having hypercalcemia causes diabetes. Probably because when you have too much calcium, cal cal calcium, it can lock up magnesium because calcium and magnesium work together. So if you have soft tissue calcium and spurring, arthritis and things like that, um, or taking uh, Tums or calcium carbonate, um, you know, you're not taking enough magnesium, just straight calcium carbonate, you know, especially if you're on antacids, that can set you up for diabetes. Interesting. That's probably also why vitamin D3 and K2 improve diabetes as well. I put some links down below for that too. So probably because this mobilizes the calcium and frees up the magnesium. So how can you get these minerals? Well, it just so happens they're both in the same food, vegetables. Yeah. So we keep coming back to this vegetable thing, right? You need seven to 10 cups of vegetables every single day. You can do it in a blender. You can do it in a salad, it's not that hard. But it's very important to get that amount because if you're doing seven to 10 cups to get your potassium, you're gonna easily get the magnesium because magnesium is in the same vegetables. You don't need as much, you need about I think 450 milligrams, but you need 4,700 milligrams of potassium. So here's what I want you to do. For the next week, go ahead and start consuming more vegetables. You'll increase these and just see if any of these symptoms start going away, then you'll know that this is what caused or contributed to your problem in the first place. All right, thanks for watching, I'll, and I'll, I'll check out your comments below.